I want to talk about the way that ministers were briefed, but with apologies, I too have a couple of quick questions about the dossier, because things have been raised in evidence before today, as well as today, that we need to be very clear about. You said earlier on today that you were asked about the Prime Minister's use, not in the dossier but in the House of Commons, of the phrase or the word growing to describe the WMD. I think he said the program was active, detailed and growing, and you said, I haven't got your exact words, that he was being told that there was, for example, continuing production of chemical weapons in the September report. Clearly what the Prime Minister had to do in his foreword to the dossier was to try to put in clear layman's language for a public document, key messages, the gist of what was in the document, and you have told us in your earlier evidence that it was drafted in number 10, it wasn't your document, it was his forward. Just trying to take hindsight out of the equation, I would just like to ask you whether, if you had been writing the forward, to what extent you would have used the language that he used, based on the intelligence that you were putting forward from the J. I. C. For example, where he said that the picture presented by the J. I. C. in recent months has become more, not less, worrying, and that he was increasingly alarmed by the evidence. He said that the assessed intelligence had established beyond doubt. This is a phrase that has come up in earlier evidence sessions that Saddam had continued to produce chemical and biological weapons and that he continued in his efforts to develop nuclear weapons. Then it goes on to refer to ballistic programs. Are those words that you would have used? Well, this was a different sort of document from anything that I would have written or would have been asked to write. So. The situation wouldn't have arisen. I can't quite imagine a document which the chairman of the J. I. C. or indeed the chief of S. I. S. would have been asked to write. Which would have required, if you like, language like this or to express an opinion in these terms. So I can't quite answer the question directly. I would only say that there is nothing that I either wrote or oversaw the drafting of that and did say any of those things in those terms. This was, as I said before, a document drafted in number 10, which I did not look at line by line in the way I did the document for which I was responsible. I said in my evidence that it was overtly a political document that has been generally translated as it was an overtly political document, and there of course is a difference between the two things. I double checked this a couple of times, and I certainly said it was overtly a political document. I'm happy with that. I'm not happy with the other way of expressing it, because it sounds like a loaded comment and it wasn't meant to be a loaded comment. So my answer is that that kind of language, you wouldn't expect there just wouldn't be a document being compiled by the head of intelligence assessment, or indeed the head of the intelligence agency, which would express things in those terms because you wouldn't be required to, or asked to, or expected to express things in those terms. 